and welcome to Relapse Engineering, I'm Alan. Today in the workshop I'm looking at setting angles using the compound slide. There are three ways to set an angle on the compound slide that I know of. First way is using the protractor that's already provided. This is a visual look at the protractor and just set it by eye. The second way is to use, if you have one fitted, a digital readout. Some digital readouts have a slope calculation and using that you can work out the angle of the compound slide. And the third way is using a sign bar on the compound slide. Now on my lathe I can only use the first way because I don't have any reference faces on the compound slide that I can run a indicator along or set a sign bar to that will tell me the angle. So today in the workshop I'm going to machine in a reference face on my compound slide so that I can use the other methods to set the angles. So let's have a look how we do it. So if I wanted to set an angle there are three ways I can do it on a lathe but on this machine there's only one way I can do it. You can turn the top of the compound slide round to the angle you need and read it on the protractor. But the trouble with this is the scale on the protractor is not that clear what you're setting it to. If you wanted to set it to ten and a half degrees you're just judging the distance because the distance between each degree is very small. The other method is to use your digital readout and take a reading off the front and the third method is to use a compound slide sign bar. But the only problem on the Boxford and on my brothers as well the faces on the compound slide have not been machined they're just painted casting. This is the top of the compound slide the tool holder fits in here but this face is a rough casting, the back face is a rough casting. So if I wanted to set an angle and clock up a face to see what the angle is, I've got no face to work on. So what I want to do is take the top off and machine this face so it gives me a straight edge which is parallel to the axis of the compound slide. So to take this apart, first thing is to undo the screw on the end and all I'm using is a washer that has a cutout in it because in the middle there's the head of the screw you need to get on each side to be able to turn that, undo that Allen key in this hole here. Undo the grub screw. And this should pull off. I've removed the two cap heads, the springs and the brass discs that are inside this dial. Undo these two cap heads and I should be able to remove the spindle but there are some bearings in the back of this collar. And then undo the gib strips and you need to take the whole unit off the lathe and undo the nut from the other side. So that's the compound slide with all the parts removed. This is the top of my compound slide and the tool post goes in this T-slot. As you can see the casting has not been machined at all on this side nor on the bottom side or on the two ends. So the only part that's been machined on the top slide casting is the slide at the bottom and the T-slot on the top face and the bottom face. So what I want to do is mill 
a flat surface down here about a half inch wide just to give me a guidance for a dial indicator to run along so I can check the angle when the compound angle is set. So to do that I need to make sure that this is parallel to the dovetail otherwise 5mm an angle on here that's wrong not true to the dovetail that will give me an error on the reading. So the only way I can think of doing it is to get two 3.8 Dells one in there one in there make sure they're not obstructed by the vice they're free and they're resting on the V in the dovetail so now I can run a dial indicator over the top of each and get this level to the dovetail so that's zero on that one And on this one, I think it might be zero. Okay, I've put a 12 millimeter end mill, and I just want to mill a nice f surface along this edge. The milling cutters just touching on each end so that shows that when the casting was originally machined it was set true to the raw casting. The castings have like a white filler on them and then that painted over the top so as I get through you can see the white filler underneath the paint. I've only taken about 20 thou off the top of that casting. Most of that is filler and paint. Just put a little bit of oil on, not to help the tool cut, just to get a better finish on the final cut. Now there I have a nice flat surface, the finish is quite good, it's not brilliant but it's flat enough to run a dial indicator across. What I'll do next is turn it round in the vise, do the other side and then reassemble it. I'll take the sharp edge off this corner all the way across with the foil. I've set it back up on the other side of the casting in exactly the same way as I did the first side. You can see on this side there's a lot more filler on the casting. Remove the dowels under the vise and that's both sides finished. I 
I've taken the sharp edges off the corner with the file and now it's time for reassembly. And the cover and two two cap heads on the end to fit that. Next the dial. Now on this dial the two springs go in here with two grub screws and two brass pads. I've reassembled the compound slide so now I have a face this side and the other side where I can run a dial indicator along to get the angle of the compound slide. It didn't look as if that dial indicator was touching. Yeah, it's touching. So that's zero to the bed of the lathe. And if we look at the datum, it's on zero there. So now we can use either side of the compound slide that we've machined to set an angle with the digital readout or with a sign bar. So let's use the digital readout and see how we set the angle. I've set my angle on the compound slide to roughly 10 and a half degrees by eye. Now I just want to bring my dial indicator to zero. Go round one whole revolution to zero. So when you're using your digital lead out, and you've just switched it on, the first thing you need to do is zero your X and Y. Then down on the bottom here you have one of the buttons that looks like a triangle with a milling cutter on it. Just press that and then it will ask you for the line. Now on the lathe you only have X and Y axis. Well, obviously on a milling machine you've got X, Y and Z so you can choose between the different X and Z, Y and Z, X and Y. So select the X and Y for the lathe, press enter. Now it's asking what angle is it that I need and I've already put in 10.5. Just use the keypad to enter the number, press enter. Make sure that you have your dial indicator set on zero on the end of the compound slide. We'll then move along the bed to the other end in the X direction and then move in in the Y direction till the dial indicator reads zero. Press down there, it should say move X. Move along and come in to reset your dial indicator to zero. Press Y. Now it says I am, I forget this is one, two, three, four, five decimals. I ignore the last one. So I'm left just about a tenth out on the angle. And that's a tenth of a thou over about four or five inches. So this is the second way of checking your angle. The first way was to set your angle on the protractor scale. The second way is using your digital readout. And the third way is using sign bar. And that's what we'll be looking at next time. Oh well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope that was useful. Hope it was interesting. And we'll see you next time on Enoch's Engineering. <music>